Pro Boxing fans here in London, a day away from Joshua Franklin, bumped into George Groves once again. George, how are you? Yeah, I'm good, thank you. Really good. Um, obviously here for the big fight, I know you're doing work, well, I saw you doing some stuff for the BBC and whoever else is hiring you out this week. But let's talk about <laughs> this fight. I know you're everywhere though, that's why I say that. Uh, let's talk about this fight, Joshua Franklin. A lot of people are talking about the return or possibly the older Joshua, this aggressive Joshua that we haven't seen for a few fights now. Do you feel that like we can get some of that aggressive Joshua back? The one that was, you know, knocking people out was brutal, you know, was exciting at that point. Yeah, sure. I mean, he's teamed up with Derek James, who imagine he wants his fighters to punch hard, punch with intent. Um, he's got that, you know, he's been out in the gym with these guys, the guys that fight like that, um, out in the States. So I think so. I mean, I think it's a bit clumsy when people say, oh, you know, Joshua was what he was and he needs to go back to that. And it's just, just when he was a bit younger and a bit raw and the guys in front of him were at a lower level, yeah, sure, he could, he could punch punch through the target and, and, and chin them and hurt them. But like, as you go through the levels, you know, there are the likes of Pulev and guys like that who take a shot better. Um, and then you've got the, uh, the likes of Usyk who are just classy operators, world-class fighters. So I think, yeah, tonight, I don't think you'll see anything cautious from um, Joshua tomorrow night. I don't think he's going to be sort of looking to show a new string to his bow. Um, just go out. Box well, box neat. He's a neat and tidy boxer. He punches technically sound. That's why he's so powerful. The jab, the right hand, you know, the, the bent arm shots. His uppercut is brilliant. Um, you just want him to be able to do that off of a better flow. You know, off of a more rounded, seasoned sort of pro pro style flow. For for so long, he had sort of an an upright amateurish sort of style. There was no flow. There was no. The feints didn't come off the shots properly and stuff like that. So well, once he marries that up, I think he can be unstoppable. You know, obviously, there's so many other things at play. Right now, it might be his, his mind frame, you know, how he's thinking and feeling, what, what's, what does he really want out of boxing now. Um, but for me, I think I think he can... Um, sure, he'll go out and do a real job on, on Franklin. And time ain't, ain't past him, you know. If, if he's got the desire to do it and his body is coping well, then... He can certainly have another run at the heavyweight scene and push anyone. Is there any pressure on him to put in a convincing performance? Maybe not destructive, maybe not something where he's knocked him out in the first round, but it's convincing where he's maybe put him on his bum a few times and looks good in the ring. Yeah, definitely. Um, Dean White came back for his first fight against Franklin after the loss to uh, Tyson Fury and looked flat. You know, uh, you know, he wasn't wasn't the best, Dillian White, and. We don't really want to see that from, from Joshua because he's, he's been in the spotlight for so long now, he can't really afford that. He'll want to go out and put on a good display, do a right job on um, Franklin, and I, th and I think he will. I think if he doesn't, he'll be disappointed. It doesn't mean he needs to blitz him in a round or two. That probably won't be the best outcome. The better outcome will be that we see a bit of something new from Joshua. We see him back um, in form, back with the right intent, and does have to work a little bit and take a couple of rounds to break Franklin down and then before he gets rid of him. But um, I think I think a stoppage win is, a, is almost a must for for Joshua, and um, I think you get it. As a former fighter, George, and someone somebody who's been at the pinnacle of the sport, when you're in that position where you come off of, of a loss or in a big fight and it's not gone your way, and you're mentally gathering your thoughts, we saw what happened with Joshua last time around. He mentally broke down in the ring. Um, how much of boxing is a mental game as well as the physical side of it? And how much can Joshua overcome the mental side? Yeah, of course it is. I mean, up until, you know, well, throughout his career, he's had to deal with the mental side of it, being on top of the game, having so much pressure, being an Olympic champion, and then, you know, being a star overnight. Like, not many fighters have that luxury, but also they don't have to deal with that pressure. Uh, now it's an emotional thing, you know, you have physical, mental and then emotional. The emotional side of boxing will be, he's got to come back from this loss, got to come back from this latest adversity, you know, he can't like the Ruiz loss where just getting a belt back, go out and box sensible and, and win and all's good. And Joshua's, Joshua's had, had, you know, luck as well as, you know, just everything falling in his path, you know. You lose, you lose your heavyweight world title and he doesn't get frozen out of the scene. He gets a rematch straight away and goes to Saudi and apparently he gets more money than he did to defend it. You know, so this is the first time where he's probably feeling 
like it's not all sunshine and rainbow. What's Rocky say? So, you know, he's, he's, you know, it's not the same excitement over here because he's been in the States, because it's not a world title fight, because it's against Franklin after two back to back defeats. They don't want to go out. If he goes out and puts in a, a 10 out of 10 performance, throws a challenge out to uh, Fury, Usyk, or someone else, says he wants his belts back, then. He's back, he's back becoming a serious talking point because boxing fans are fickle. Heavyweight, heavyweight boxing drops and changes extremely quickly. And um, yeah, I think he, he's, he's back in the mix. And then his mind frame, probably in a real positive, ruthless mind frame. But before he can really get there, he's got to win well tomorrow night. You did mention Fury there. Um, and obviously, we, we, I spoke to you last week about the whole breakdown between himself and Usyk. What do you see next for Fury? I, Eddie Hearn, being Eddie Hearn, is already talking about an AJ Fury fight after this. You know, possible talks happening. We've been there before. It hasn't happened, so we hope it can. But for Fury, what position is he in right now? Who does he fight from this point? Yeah, I mean, I'd follow Eddie Hearn's lead, really. He will know more about it than me. Um, I don't think Fury fights Usyk next. I think I think he will ever run out in the summer, and it will probably be, well, I don't know against who, if he's got a mandatory for his WBC, no, then, yeah, I don't know, I don't know. Um, I'm not sure what his current deal is with top rank, whether it's easy to go back to the States to, to see out that contract or something, but I'm sure he'll want to keep busy. He'll want the, the excitement, the razzmatazz of it being around him. He'll probably be watching Joshua this weekend and there'll be a big fuss around Joshua, especially if he wins well, and Fury will be, you know, he'll, he'll want that for himself. So, I think we're probably more likely to see Fury Joshua, then Fury Usyk, what do you think? It'd have to, it'd have to be one of them. It'd have to, I don't know, it's, it's a difficult one for Fury. It has to be Joshua, right? Uh, I think that's the only fact that makes sense. Um, let's talk about Fury's dad, actually. John Fury's come out and said, yeah, Tyson Fury needs to probably get rid of his trainer, get rid of his team because they seem to have distanced themselves away from this breakdown with Fury and Usyk. I think Sugar Hill did a few interviews and said, listen, I'm not here to train Tyson Fury, I'm here for Lawrence Sokoli. I think his dad didn't like that. What do you, what do you make of these, these sort of comments from, uh, from John? Couldn't care less. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, another fighter obviously involved in the mix is Deontay Wilder. We've seen him, at, I've seen him on Sky Sports doing a little training skit with Malik Scott looking good. How much of a threat is Deontay to all these guys apart from Fury who's beaten him three, twice? Yeah, you know, um, Deontay Wilder, sometimes I feel like he's just missing a little bit from being a, a, a really good elite level fighter. I mean, he is an elite level fighter, but there's just there's a little bit of a few things that he just needs to get right, and then he could be, you know, hard to pick against. Um, his last fight um, with uh, Tyson Fury, for example, he came out, he attacked the body well, you know, his game plan was a much better, but think even just the occasion being experienced as it was it was got to him sort of gassed out a bit drop fury it was down drop fury it was a great fight but yeah no he's i mean he's certainly someone to be feared he's still a, uh, a great talent enormous um, puncher and if he you know listen to malik scott who speaks really well um very philosophical trainer um if they're enjoying their boxing together and then they start he starts clicking for them yeah, I mean, it's great. I mean, he's always going to be a huge name over here, as well as the state. So, you know, there's big fights for him over here. Still hasn't fought Joshua. Still hasn't fought Dillian White. Still hasn't fought, you know, the next crop who might be Joyce or uh, Dubois. So, I'd like to see him in with any of them. You would, you'd pay for it all day long. You know, uh, titles or no titles. I just found two for myself. Um, a lot of talk about Conor Ben Chris Eubank Jr. now happening in Abu Dhabi. Um, what do you make of this? Ben Shalom did an interview yesterday with IFL and said, listen, whoever's, got, whoever's involved in this, they're making a mockery of the sport because Connor still hasn't been fully cleared from, from uh, the British Boxing Board of Control. In your eyes, what do you make of that fight taking place or just being in Abu Dhabi? Whatever. No, I, mean, um, <coughs> I don't know. I don't, I don't have a dog in the fight and I don't know enough about the situation no one ever will um, especially about the, the Conor Ben thing so it, it, you know there's an opportunity for him to fight in the state uh, if fight in Abu Dhabi uh, and it works for him then he'll be like well fuck me Conor go take it and likewise 
Eubank Jr. decides, right, well, this is a preferred route for me, risk reward or whatnot, then whatever, go for it. Might be a mockery of the fight, might not be. Um, ben Schlom's certainly not going to promote it, but um, so he's that's why he's come out and said it's it's uh, it's no good. But um, each their own. Boxing's fickle sport. It's up and change. We'll see what happens. Um, you know, I think I think it will be. I mean, it don't. It's not. It won't be nowhere near as exciting if it takes place abroad. You know, if it's in the UK, then everyone will get behind it. But maybe that's come and gone now because of what happened last time. So. Nah, uh, each their own, no dog in the fight, up for it, whatever. Just a final one from myself before I let you go. A uh, big fight happening in America, April 22nd, Javonta Tank Davis versus Ryan Garcia. Talk to me about that, George. How do you see that fight playing out? Who do you see winning that fight? Davis wins that fight. How? He knocks him out. He knocks him out. He's, he's, uh, I like him. He's vicious. He's, um, he'll, he'll catch him, he'll get to him. And I think when he hurt, when he catches him, he hurt him. I think he stopped trying to see him. You feel that Garcia's um, speed might give him trouble, though. Yeah, but not enough trouble. Not enough trouble. Davis gets him. Cool, George. So it's a pleasure to talk to yourself. Thank you very much for giving us time this week again. And uh, good luck uh, with all your work. You're a busy man. So yeah, and also the Carl Froch stuff. I watched it. Interesting. Carl Froch, Conor, McGreg Conor McGregor in the cage. Carl's very confident of himself, isn't he? Yeah, his wife Rachel is sitting in the background. She says she doesn't back Carl in the cage, but I back Carl in the cage. I'm going to train him for it. And um, I might even do celebrity guest referee. So who, who knows? But that'll be cool. That'll be fun. Don't miss it. George, thank you very much for talking to Pro Box fans. Yeah. Thank you.